May the souls of all those that who lost their life rest in peace. May their families be consoled and God grant them the fortitude to bear their irreplaceable loss. May all those who have injuries, sustained one injuries or and one loss of the other, may God grant them quick recovery and also compensate for their losses. Amen. Amen. We pray to God the Almighty to continue to bless, protect our dear country, Nigeria. Amen. Amen. Again, my dear people, um, let me again correct one impression because I've seen some people saying in the media that I released one news or the other, I have never directly or indirectly spoken or released any message since after voting on the 25th. My last comment in the media was immediately after voting on the 25th. And I've never done so until now. So whatever you see in the media, please disregard. It's not coming from me, directly or indirectly. This is my first time of speaking, coming out to the media. And I thank all of you for your understanding. For me, it's a very simple thing is to speak to Nigerians who on the 25th of February trooped out a mass as committed citizens to participate in what all of us know as what I called existential election for supposedly free, fair, credible, presidential, and national assembly election. We enjoy, and in all things we give thanks to God. For me, number one thing is gratitude. Gratitude to God Almighty that continue protect and bless our dear country, Nigeria. Number two is gratitude to Nigerians that participated in the election asking the call as true citizens in our dear country. Number three is gratitude to those of Nigerians, especially the youth, that believed and worked tirelessly for a new Nigeria and trusting that new Nigeria on that team and my good self. I thank them for their hard work. Gratitude to the obedience youths, those who believe that a new Nigeria is possible. And I say to them that a new Nigeria is possible. I will work for that new Nigeria that is possible. <laughs> their resilience, their hard work, for a new Nigeria should not be won. Daddy and I co remain committed to that new Nigeria. I know how they'll be feeling now 
because of the way the elections have come and gone. The commitment and resilience of Nigerians, even in face of unwarranted rhetoric attacks, is a testimony that a new Nigeria is indeed possible. I look at people like Lady Jennifer Ifedi, who was stabbed but insisted on voting. And that gives me courage to believe that a new Nigeria is indeed possible. And there's so many other Nigerians. The election that we just witnessed have been conducted and results announced as programmed. It is a clear version from electoral rules and guidelines as we were promised. This election, as you know, did not meet the minimum standard expected of a free transparent, credible, fair election. It will go down as one of the most controversial elections ever conducted in Nigeria. The good and hardworking people of Nigeria have again been robbed by our supposed leaders when they trusted. However, let me humbly and most respectfully appeal to all Nigerians to remain peaceful, law-abiding, and conduct themselves in the most responsible manner. Please be assured that Dati and I, and indeed all of us, this is not the end, but the beginning of the journey for a birth of new Nigeria. Dati Baba Ahmed and I remain absolutely undaunted and deeply committed to the project of a new Nigeria that will be built on honesty, transparency, fairness, justice, equity. All the above starts with the process. The process through which people come into office is far more fundamental more important than what they do thereafter. It is my belief, and I've maintained so consistently, that if you must answer His Excellency, the process through which you arrive to office must be excellent. <laughs> we must now require that we do the right things in order to generate the required confidence and moral authority to lead. As you know, the destruction of a society begin and gradually progress when we act rascally. We deliberate the manipulation of the rule of law and suppression of the will of the people. During my campaign process, I would say that we will govern by the rule of law because we know what not doing that will bring about. And that's why we say that. Let me reiterate and assure you that good people of Nigeria that we will explore all legal and peaceful action to reclaim our mandate. <laughs> we won the election and we will prove it to Nigerians. <laughs> Please do not despair. We have elections coming up on the 11th, I enjoy you to go out, campaign. 
and being a people to gain, come out and vote in that election. We still have so many massive support out there that we need for our subnational and state assemblies. Please come out and be part of that election. I assure you that I will be part of it. I assure you that I am totally committed for a better future in this country. And nothing will stop that. That is commitment. My commitment is total. The rest are shown. Now your support will not be in vain. And you will not find us one thing. We must build a better Nigeria. Where Nigerian youths will be happy, glad to call their own country. Thank you, and may God Almighty continue to bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And thank you very much. So, colleagues, if you don't take anything home in what we've just heard, he said we won the election and we will prove it to the world. We will reclaim that mandate. Another round of applause for him. Okay, so. We will take a few questions from uh, journalists who are... So, if you raise your hands, I'll recognize you. You come out here and speak. Okay. Oh, all right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Kimbale. I'm a reporter with Channels Television. I'd like to ask you, um, it does look... I mean, I have two questions, uh, and they're quick ones. Um... You, you said that you're going to reclaim and you said you won the elections. If you'd like to expatiate on what you meant by that, uh, in what areas do you think, uh, because your speech does look to me like uh, elections is flawed as far as you're concerned. What are the evidence that you have uh, to support the claim uh, about the conduct of the election? And if you can tell us which areas, what are the, what are the aspects of the elections you think that are not right. Uh, the second part of my question is, um, the journey since Saturday election, you seem to have formed an alliance with other political parties like the PDP. Are you doing this challenge on the election or the outcome of the election alongside with them? How much of partnership do you have uh, with the PDP? Have you spoken to... Uh, the, the candidate of the PDP, what kind of uh, alliance are you forming? Um, again, because of the sensitivity of the outcome, the nation went into a very crucial and tense election, came out of it, things, uh, the nation is still very tensed, and also we, we discover that the, the nation at this time needs to come together. Uh, what kind of words are you going to send out to your supporters and your followers uh, in respect to the fact that we must have a nation first, uh, and then we must be able to keep the nation together. And lastly, have you spoken? Have you, sp have you spoken? Have you reached out to the, uh, the man that has been declared winner, Palatinobu? Thank you. Well, uh, you did ask me the process and the areas. If I tell you all this, I don't know what I'll be telling the court. <laughs> we have passed the stage of that because we were asked to go to the court. Isn't that what they said? So let's go there. <laughs> I'm, 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 remember that I'm obedient. <laughs> I want to tell you about I'm going to go where I'm directed to go. <laughs> so, and then you will see where and how. Or just to give you an emphasis, in 2015, the number of registered voters, if I can remember, 
is about uh, what was it again? About sixty-seven million registered voters and twenty nine point four voted. In 2019, that tally increased to about 80, 84 million. And about 28.4 million voted. And then we were told that about 11 million registered in 2022. If I'm correct, which brought the registration to about 95, but 87 collected their PVC because of the issue of not being able to collect their PVC. But only 23.3 million voted. You can see that how Nigeria works. So we have an increase of 11 million, and the voters dropped by sharply by over 20 percent instead of increasing the reason it was due to manipulation and reduction and removal and inputs of votes here and there because otherwise the number is supposed to have increased it didn't increase because people were busy doing what is wrong and we have chosen our challenge this rascality for the future of the country Nigeria cannot conduct election 63 years after independence. It's something everybody should reflect on. Unexamined life is not worth living. And we can't go on like this. Shane, will you ask about the alliance? We are not in alliance. We are discussing and in partnership with other people and any other Nigeria who feels hot as we do. I've said it and I repeat, I have all my life challenged the process. I believe that the process through which people get anywhere is respected. As a person, I've had a school and want me a professor and I can go and see my reply to them. I said, I can't be because I have not gone through the process of being a prophet. The process through which people come into any place is far more fundamental than what they do thereafter. We must not have people who have the moral authority because of the process who come into it. So if we use the process we use today, tell me how we can tell the train robber, the kidnapper, that is doing the wrong thing. Say we have not made calls to anybody. I'm not against making calls. Everybody that is involved in this, even the two main containers, have always said, are my elder brothers, you know, they're far my seniors. They should actually be my father, so I respect them. And I keep with that. And if they call me and want me to see them, I'll see them. But on this issue, I'm challenging the process. Okay, here. We'll go from here. Please come out and. Uh, my name is Fidel Simba. I work for Al Jazeera TV. Um, my question is just about the judiciary. You're going to court. They've been concerned about the integrity of the, you know, the judiciary. Do you believe you'll be able to get justice? given the questionable calls and decisions, especially of the Apex Court. Mr. Fidelis, there's no Nigerian who can say has been a beneficial of the judiciary more than me. And all, my, all this while they tell me about the integrity of the judiciary. From 2003, I've always been in the court. I was there three years to reclaim my mandate. I was there 
to come back from impeachment. I was there to do interpretation. I was there to challenge my second tenor election. And in all, I've been successful. Without, without, in any way compromising or doing the wrong thing. Like I said, I have never knowingly, and everybody can know, compromise any law officer, any judicial officer, anybody in process because I believe they're doing their job. So I believe they know their customers in the other side. Mine is to do the right thing. And I'm going to go there with the right thing. And what I'm going, I'm seeking who will benefit the future of their own children. And I'm sure they will do the right thing. Okay. All right, just sitting next. I'm coming to your side. Please. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Timothy Obiezu. I report for VOA, Voice of America. And my question is, I've been speaking with observers and um, political experts who say that um, for you to be able to reclaim a mandate that you said has been taken from you, you need to prove abundantly enough that um, the suppression, voter suppression that has been alleged, the violence and um, everything that happened on Saturday was enough to sway the votes in your direction. So do you have abundantly enough evidence to do so? Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me again say it. We're not yet in court. That is why the court exists. And they've asked me to go to court. And I want to go to court. I don't want to answer questions on my way to court. I want to go to court. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right, Tomo, come. I wanted to travel this way, but I see you are... Okay. My name is Omar Bazwai and I report for AI, uh, Arise TV, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, ju I just want to ask you, uh, because you told us um, some moments ago that um, you have been having meetings, series of meetings, meeting with a lot of people, um, people from the international community, and maybe back home here in Nigeria. Do you feel like you are under any pressure from anywhere. Not at all. I can tell you, nobody will ever put me under pressure when I challenge misconduct, rascality, or illegal process. Because it's not about so it's not about, you can't, it's, how do you put, how do you say, how do you put the person who is doing kidnapping under pressure? Which engine what is wrong? It is not about me, it's not about you, it's not about the, it's about the society, our children we live in. And I want people to understand that. I'm challenging a process that is fought, a process that is wrong. It could be anybody. It is not about anything. So there's no pressure. Nobody has. Okay. And they know they will not. Okay. The lady at the back here. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rena Obozegi. I work for Dark Communications AIT. So I want to ask you, how are you engaging the international communities on the outcome of the elections? Thank you very much. Now the real AIT, not former AIT. Quite frankly, I'm not the, unless an invitation, I'm not engaging any international community or international body. Because I feel this is a Nigerian problem. And this is time we have to start solving our problem. Elections have been conducted in all parts of Nigeria, Africa. And 
Nobody have ever seen something near what we're going through here. So, I'm not consulting anybody. Okay. Good day, sir. My name is Neyo Muni. I represent, I'm correspondent for News Central. If, I know you've recorded a lot of success rates when you go to court. I'm not trying to be an antagonist, but if you eventually go to court and it remains the same that the mandate is given to your opponent, what will you do? Secondly, we've seen a lot of um, visuals online about youth destroying their PVCs. What word do you have to these youth who you somewhat represent their demographic? Well, I'm still going to go around appealing to the youth. This is a long distance journey. And you have to know, I'm committed to going through this journey with them. It's not going to be a one-day journey. No matter how long the night is, they will be there. And I want to show them they will be there. We have to go through darkness. I'm going to go through this darkness with them. Because I know we're not going to ask the people to live easily. That's why they're there. That's why they have structure. That structure of criminality can't go away overnight. That structure of destruction can't go overnight. Structure that has created 133 million people living in multi-dimensional poverty can't go out overnight. Structure that have created 95% 25 million people living under absolute poverty can't go out overnight. Structures that have created over 20 million out of school children can't go out overnight. We need, all we need to show is commitment, resilience, like use all the resources we can, all our energy, everything. All I assure them that I'm not going away. I'll be at the forefront. We will walk through this darkness until they break. It's something. I know the court will, the court will do the right thing. Their children are involved. The future of their children are involved. I had experience today, just today, that I told I told them, my chairman, I choose whenever I meet a young person, I want to know what that young person does. So you see me every day talking to young people. So this half, just this morning, I went somewhere with the chairman. And a young lady was to board the water for me to make tea. I said, I will do it. He said, she will do it. She was excited to do it. She was worried. And she said to me, she was almost in tears that I lost the election. And I said, so what's your name? She said, she's this, call her name. I said, so who are you? She said, she's from Nasarawa. So I said, where do you go to school? She said, she went to university of Nasarawa. She said, so what do you do? She said, she has no job. She graduated since 2018. She said, so what are you trying to do? She told me she's learned how to do baking. So why are you not baking instead of being here to do this? Says she doesn't have seventy five thousand naira to buy an oven. Okay, uh, so many people at the back there. So what I'm going to do is that's the life you get in Nigeria mm -hmm. every day. People who don't have money to buy an oven. Okay, so um, those are the back. I recognize two people from the back so that you can, because of the time it takes you to move. You be coming. Let me call someone here while you are coming. Good morning, Your Excellency. My name is Dixon Irebu. I anchor Nigeria right now on AIT. With the gloomy picture that is out there in our site today, with the rot in the political space, where do you get your inspiration? and your strength from. Nigerians want to know this. Of course, I get my inspiration takes him from the young girl who doesn't have 75,000 naira 
to die an orphan. When people like me can sit down in a place and drink a bottle of wine that is costing that amount in the same country. When people like me have stolen billions of public money that would have bought an oven for that young graduate. So that's where you get your inspiration. I said I want to build a new Nigeria where those youths will have hope, where there will be a future for them. But I can't build it, Dixon, unless I do the right things so that they can emulate how to do the right things. We cannot do it. We have to teach them how to lead, do the right thing. Because they have an opportunity to do what other people are doing. And you've seen it from my corporate world where I chair corporations, including Security and Exchange Commission, to my being governor of a state, I had an opportunity to do what other people are doing, but I didn't do it. Because we have to live and show an example and use the resources of the country, public resources for public good. And as those who are who had the opportunity of doing the right thing for the country to do the right thing, if we have a security man, he should do his job. If we have somebody to conduct an election, I've been an observer of election in some of the West African countries. Texting, it wasn't anything near this. Is this what we spent billions to do? Hey, what a minute. We should have used that billions to do something else and announce what they announced. Because this young girl would have had an orphan and they would do the announcement. Okay. All right, quickly. I hope you are not AIT. Kamala is my name. I work with TV3 in Ghana. Uh, you said that you are going to court. One, what are the reliefs that you are seeking? Then two, the, the Air Force and Africa Union Observer Missions have described this election as generally fair. Uh, do you ascribe to the suggestions or the reports describing the elections as generally fair? Okay. Thank you. Well, let me tell you, throughout my comments, I didn't want to mention comments of observers, because if you choose it, there's so many other observers like European Union, EU, NRI, and so many, who have said it did not meet the standards, who have said it's rigged, who have said this. So let's not talk about what the observers are saying. Let's look at what Nigerians are saying. This is essentially a Nigerian problem, and I want to hear Nigerians. With all due respect to those who are visiting us, it's a Nigerian problem. I'm talking about what Nigerians feel. You're from Ghana? Is this fair in Ghana? <laughs> Because you have, you have, yeah. Just say, tell me, is this fair? I just asked you a question. It is not, my brother, I've been, I've been to your country and I've witnessed the election. The earlier we start saying things are wrong when it's wrong, my brother, Africa will be good. It doesn't matter to me because it happened there. Don't be part of that. Africa needs to be fixed. And we all have to tell ourselves the truth. This is very unfair. It's the least expected of us. The last. The other two. question he asked about going to court. I've told you, I cannot answer until I get to where I was asked to go. If I was asking a question that you're asking me here as I was coming here. I was coming here to see journalists and ask their questions. And that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Now, the last two. No, just come. The lady who's calling me, come out.
Okay. Yeah. Your Excellency, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Kingsley of the Daily Independent Newspapers. Are we, I wouldn't want to throw a popular path now. My question to you would be, Nigeria has seen a lot from the violence in the Northeast to the killings in some other parts of the country, well, parts of the country in the South. If, for the sake of peace, the person and the party that was declared to be the winner approaches you for a unity government, for the sake of peace, don't you think all souls should be shaped and we throw the part of peace? Let me say it again for purposes of your understanding. I have never, if you remember when I read my, when I made my Jara comments, where is it? Please come, I want to be looking at you. Listen very carefully. When I made, when I made my Jara comment, when I made my Jara comment, if you recall, I did ask for people to go about peacefully. And since after that election, I have never anything to show that I don't want peace. I believe in a very peaceful Nigeria. I've had several phone calls where I asked people to remain calm and peaceful. That has nothing to do with what I'm challenging. I'm challenging the process. If the process is faulty, it's faulty. In fact, you can't build peace on a faulty foundation. It's never happened to anyone in the world. You have to deal, the foundation has to be right for peace to prevail. And that is what the foundation is, what I'm challenging. And I'm pleading with you. It's not about me, it's not about you. It's about the future of the society, our children and future generations who live it. It has to be built on foundation of honesty, transparency, justice, Fairness. We went into an election where somebody said and promised and shouted, This is the route we are going to go. This is how we are going to go there. And we followed the track. All of us. Suddenly, in that long distance journey. And it wasn't one day, and it wasn't quick. It lasted for over one year. And all of us told that line. Followed it, and suddenly, as we get to the end of it, somebody jumps from somewhere and claim the prize. What do you do at that stage, my brother? It's not about peace. There's a process of being anything you want to be. If you want to be a professor. You must go and be a lecturer, write thesis, and you are proved to be a professor. If you want to be a doctor, you go and read medicine. You cannot suddenly, from being a lawyer, and you say, confide a doctorate degree. No. Lawyers go, go through law school. I can be a lawyer. I cannot be awarded senior advocate today, no matter my knowledge of the law, because it is the process of being a senior advocate. Process is important, my brother. That's what makes a society. In this society, we have seen people suddenly become a senior advocate, 
without going to law school. That's what we want to stop. Orderliness, rule of law. That's what makes a society. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I think um, in the interest of time, you have a whole lot of things to do, and I'll call it, yes, I, I asked her to come because I know how you feel about young people. I wanted her to ask the question, but she got tired standing, and she went back. Do you still want to ask your question? Okay. So, hello. Okay, you can come now. Please come. Um, so, my name is Josephine from Channel TV. So, I wanted to ask, what are your advices on the youth? As the, what are your advices on the youth as coordinators? Because they believe their votes don't count. So, are you telling them to come out to vote in governorship? Thank you. My sister, I insisted because when I saw these are the people who have put their faith in us. Be assured. Believe me as an elder brother. Believe me as a father. Believe me that this journey, I'm totally committed to it. And I will walk through with you. I know how disillusioned you are. Don't be. Because the people we're dealing with. have made up their mind that we will succeed. We have also made up our mind that we will succeed. Yeah. And I assure you that the will, I assure you that the will, our will, is bigger than that. The God we worship will see us through. Because you know we are doing the right thing. So uh, let me re-emphasize. Go out massively on Saturday. Vote for the right persons. Vote for Labour Party. We are committed to this. I know it's not the, as easy as I say it because you're feeling people see me now on the road. I was just telling. Somebody of my life I have never had a position where I feel emotional. Right? But and I see people all over the place and young people and they're crying and telling me, I'm going to leave this country. I can no longer stay. And I feel the pain. Just like I said, the young girl was crying today as she was trying to boil water and everything. But I'm preaching to all of them. Please stay. I'm not going to go away. I'm going to stay with you. And I assure you, we will overcome. Amen. They won't be there when the day comes. Yes, but we will be there. Yes. So another round of applause for our presidential candidate. Yes. Your Excellency. Thank you for coming. My president. And ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you coming. Thank you very much. The press conference is now over. May we sing the national anthem? Arise, O compatriots.
The Labour Party presidential candidate there, Peter Obi, addressing his first major media uh, conference uh, after 